One, two, two. Three. I'm nervous, I can't do it. To us, home is all about family and our heritage is a big part of who we are. Our goal is to not only engrave our family history into our children's hearts, but into the walls of our new home during our biggest adventure yet. Join us as we travel back to our roots to seek inspiration, discover cultures that are in our blood, and source products to make our new house a home. Hey everyone, welcome to episode six of Making a House a Home. I can't believe we are already this far. I know, that's crazy. Series. Today is such an emotional, adventurous, very special, episode because we are taking an adventure from Stavanger and driving clear up to Bergen and stopping into my grandpa's hometown of Hogesen. Hogesen. <laughs> he left his left sir. My right sir. His right sir and his left sir. I see your mama. We're doing a ferry, which is a big boat. Here we go, we're driving on to the ferry. It's like into the whale's mouth. this place We really wanted to find the gravesite of my great-grandparents. I've been doing a lot more family history, diving into their stories. They're stories that I've heard my whole life, but now it's just become so much more real as I've become an adult. I have visited these grave sites when I was Lucy's age. I was five. And so to be able to go back now and to be able to take my own five-year-old was just incredible. So right now we are driving into Hogeson. This is where my poppy pair is from. But he would tell us all sorts of stories about how him and his brother Gunner would do all sorts of mischievous things during the war. During the war, the hills behind Hogesen. The Germans built lots of bunkers up at those hills. So uh, what we did was sabotage. Lock them from the inside. Lock them from the inside. Well, we slit, slit that. We were skinny little uh, boys, so we could put out the gun Yes. Oh, yeah. I see. And the German, big German soldiers we couldn't be seen. I can imagine they were just looking at those things and, <laughs> and could see what was doing and probably got a big stick or something. I think about it and I'm like, that is terrifying. So We're really stoked to be here right now to know all those stories and where they took place and to be in this area. It's just so cool. One of my favorite stories is when Norway was liberated from the Nazis. It was actually the first time he saw the US flag. He was um, standing. <laughs> I don't know, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> So he was standing in the street. He remembers being at the back end of this big crowd with something going on. He saw a United States flag being pulled through um, two of the buildings. That was the first time he saw the American flag. And what it was was that the war was declared over that day and so there was a big crowd together for a celebration. And so there my grandpa was standing at the back of this crowd in confusion trying to see what was going on and a bunch of German soldiers drove up behind the crowd where he was. And so everyone turned around and suddenly he was at the front of the crowd. As a German soldier unlatched his holster, the entire crowd locked arms in defiance. And suddenly the soldiers got back in their truck and they fled. It's cool because um, he raised us being so proud of our Norwegian heritage, but also to be very proud of our American heritage. Um, and at, in that moment, he, he vowed that he would serve that country that liberated Norway. After the war ended, he moved to the States and he went and served for the United States. He volunteered, which says a lot about his character especially because my Moomoo was pregnant with my dad at the time and my my poppy didn't meet my dad until he was two years old. Can you imagine that? Not meeting your firstborn until they're two because you wanted to volunteer and um, serve your country, the country that liberated your homeland. Are you trying? <laughs> I'm just saying some special Where stories. So we're going on a hunt right 
right now to go find Harold Hagen's grave site. So we're going through all of these cemeteries looking for Olga and Harold Hagen's, their grave site. And we went to what, nine different cemeteries? We literally went to all of them. There's about nine or 10 in that whole city of Hogerson. And we visited all of them. And to make it more dramatic, it started raining. We just made it into such an emotional journey right. trying to find it. I've been holding in I just want to say the words out loud. Drenched. Oh man. Not here. Dang it. I think one of the coolest things being there in Hogerson is thinking and talking as we're driving about all these different stories that we've heard from both Haley's mum and dad. Really there was something very sweet about it and humbling and uh, to think that actually happened in real life was kind of crazy as well. We are 99% positive we just found it. Wait, that's yes. it. That's it. Huge. That is it. And it's beautiful it's too. It's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> We finally found the main graveyard here in Hogesen. It is the most gigantic graveyard, so I think we might be here a while. <laughs> there it is! We found it! <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Look how beautiful. This is your great great grandparents. This is Olga and Harold. This is who your grandpa was named after. You can feel how special it is. It feels like they're here with us today. So it's just it's a special day. Five, four, nine, one, four, eight. So we took the rest of the afternoon just walking around Hogason and we even visited my poppy pear's house where he was raised. I visited here in 1996 when I was five years old. And I, my age. yeah, when I was Lucy's age, it's funny because we came in here and I instantly knew this was the house. I was like, Brad, that's it. That is the house. And here it is. It's right there. After our little pit stop in Hogason that actually ended up being three or four hours <laughs> yeah. long, we continued on our journey to Bergen. And Bergen is another very special city because that is where my Moo Moo, my grandmother, was raised. Mom, don't tell mommy. Why not? You're so cute. We just pulled off the side of the road here in the middle of who knows where in Norway. And this whole time we've been having white vibes for the house. We've been thinking white vibes, but how pretty is this going with dark colors? Have it be like a black or a dark brown or a dark blue with the white window panes. That is so cute. finally got some sunshine. So what did we do? We pulled over, we stripped down, got into our swimsuits, and we went the Norwegian way and jumped in the fjord. I want you to jump in, she says. It'll be fun, she says. We've got no towels, she says. It's zero degrees in there, she says. But it's warm and What's I'm getting warm? suckered into it. Oh, the warm. weather! <laughs> it showed 100% rain on the forecast. So I think it's only fair that we have to get into the water right now because the sun's out. I don't have Scandinavian blood in me. So every time I swear when we're at like glaciers or just cold lakes, Haley's always like, let's jump in. Greta, you gonna get in the water? Then I swim in the water. What are we doing, Haley? <laughs> we're not. We're not. You're not. You're jumping in too. <laughs> Alice, are you going in first? 
He took about too much water by the looks of it. There's a jellyfish in the water. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a nice jellyfish. That looks sketch. Let's see if we can see this jellyfish. It was filled with jellyfish, so we're like, okay, yes. there's one there, there's one there. I'll jump right here and hope for the best. Um, but look at this view. Not bad. I'm scared of the jellyfish more than anything. Is this dumb? Greta says no. <laughs> oh, the water's not even bad, guys. Okay, well, ladies first. Okay. <laughs> no! One. Two. two. Nervous, I can't do it. So fun on these trips, just being together as a family and traveling around, to take a second and look and glance into the girls' lives and how they perceive things. And we did that every once in a while. We'd look back, and this one moment was so cute because Lucy and Greta were just back there holding hands across, you know, the car, and we just melted. <laughs> So after such a beautiful, <laughs> yet such an emotional roller Crazy coaster day. type of day, we pulled up to the ferry port to realize that we just got the last ferry by the skin of our teeth. It had was we the have last missed that, we would have had to again. find some random like boat shack to stay in overnight. We would, we would have been sleeping in the car and we just barely made it by the skin of our teeth. Once again, divine style. <laughs> I woke up in the world I wanted. So as we were on the boat that night, looking out at the most beautiful sunset with the kids in my arms, looking at Brad. It was picture perfect. It was just, I just felt myself feeling overwhelmed with gratitude for our ancestors and all of these stories of all the hard things that they had gone through for us to have such a blessed life and for our children to have such a blessed life. It was such an incredible way to end this day. for episode six. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode. As you know, this episode had a very special place in my heart as it's been kind of vulnerable just putting my heart out Absolutely. there. But I'm just so excited to be able to you know, have this to be able to pass on even to our future children. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, we are going to be linking them down below. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button to see next week's episode, which we are going to give a little sneak peek of right here. Go find some trolls on the trail. Where's a troll? Can you see one? I, yeah, right here. Right yeah. Where? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and to see more of our lifestyle, you can follow us along on Haley Divine and at Bradley Divine on Instagram. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Thumbs up if you know it, like Lucy said. <laughs> and we will see you guys very soon. Thank you. See you, you. next week. Bye. Why did I say thank you? <laughs> <laughs>